We are going to start um, on our backs this morning because this one uh, is morning. It's a Sunday morning. It seems like a good place to start. Move my legs out of the way. We're going to launch our back. Uh, you can bring the soles of the feet together if you like. Maybe the feet stay flat on the ground, just depending on how your lower back is doing this morning. Maybe just drawing the shoulders up by the ears and then allow the shoulder heads to uh, kind of melt towards the earth. And if that doesn't work for you, if you're not somebody whose shoulders <laughs> melt towards the earth, maybe a little um, action of the shoulders, squeezing the shoulders towards each other will allow the shoulder heads to start to drop towards the earth. You can even bring your arms into field goal position on the fingertips, um, fingernails, and also. I'm just starting to find your breath here, just starting to settle in. Just coming to the rhythm of your own breath. Nothing special. And then beginning to notice the sensations in your body. might notice some tension, some discomfort. You might notice ease, you might notice temperature. And my arms on a um, solid floor. And the floor's cold, so you can feel that on my arms. And I notice the air around you. the mat or the earth under your feet. The clothing as it comes in contact with your skin. And then bringing your awareness, if you will, to the back of the pelvis. Noticing how the back of the pelvis was into contact with the earth. Not judging the contact, but just noticing it's the same on both sides. You're experiencing the same sensations of lack of sensation. Maybe you can have some numbness going on. No right or wrong, just noticing. Noticing if there are any areas of holding, holding on to your bones or the muscles at all. See if you can let go of the engagement of the muscles. See if you can allow the head to be a little heavier. The shoulder girls. Let's put it the other way. Excuse me, Pam. The pelvis. I'm sorry, but I can't hear her. Does everybody else hear fine? You do? It sounds kind of at a distance. I hear that it's low. I'm noticing, if you will. She can't hear me? The rhythm of your own breath. I hear you. I just wish you'd talk a little. I can hear, but it sounds really. Taking deep inhale in through the nose. That's better. Can you hear it? And exhaling through the nose. That's better. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Noticing the breath, the temperature of the breath is really And seeing if you can fill up the abdomen a little bit more deepening the inhale. Making the exhale nice and steady. 
Trying to remove any choppiness in the rest of the inhale. Expand. And as you exhale, emptying out all the way, maybe giving your belly a squeeze. Inhale, expand. Deepening the inhale. And exhale all the way out. Two more times here. Inhale. And exhale. Breathing in. And breathing out. Returning to your regular breath here. Whatever style of breathing you like to use during the yoga practice. Being sure to breathe. When you're ready to, we'll draw the right knee into the chest. The hands to the chin, just like we just did this. And maybe with the hands on the shins or just uh, below the knee, start to press the knee into the hands and resist the hand until you start to feel the gluteal muscles on that right side turn on. So you should feel like the underside of the back of the foot turn on. Keep pressing with the knee, resisting the hand, one more breath. And crossing the right ankle over the left. So sorry if you think we're not already flat on the ground. Bring the left foot flat to the ground. Press away with the right knee. And activate that right foot. So pull the toes back by the knee and then press into the pinky side edge of the foot. So you're trying to karate chop with the pinky edge. And then press the knee away from you. So towards the far end of the mat. Notice the sensation in the right outer hip here. The start of the practice is might be enough. You might be like, that's good. If you'd like a little bit more sensation, you can use the strength of that left leg to hug the left knee and the chest. You can give yourself a little assistance in the hands, left hand to the foot, right hand to the knee. Releasing the left foot down. Go on across the right leg, send it straight to the sky, just circle up the ankle. Reach one direction and then the other. And then plant the right foot on the ground. Hug the left knee into the chest. So hands come onto the shin, just below the knee. Give yourself a little squeeze first. Massage out the organs just a bit. And then once you're done with that, once you feel like, okay. You didn't squeeze. Then press the um, shin into the hand and resist the hand. So not pressing straight up, but pressing as if you are moving your foot so that you're trying to stomp your foot on the ground. But don't let it go. So you hang your hands there, press away, press away. You might notice that one side is a little bit easier to engage than the other. I have a really hard time getting the left gluteal muscles to turn on. And I actually have to back off and try again. Multiple times usually, back off and try again. There we go. The first lift to turn on for me is my low back. And I can feel that in this position because the floor gives you feedback on that. So just kind of notice hmm, what's going on in my body. Let's take one more breath here. Let go of that. Um, resistance, press the left ankle with the right knee. And then again, press away with the knee. Draw the toes back towards the knee, so uh, flex the, what we call flexing the foot. And then karate chop through the pinky side edge of the foot. So the outer shin, all the way up to the outer um, the hip becomes active when you do those couple of moves. Then press the knee away a little bit more, a little bit more activation. You might stay right here, you might be like, that's not for me today. Maybe you hug you with the right. And again, you might notice a difference from the right side to the left side. 
maybe it's a difference in sensation, maybe it's a difference in how the bones move. You're not in the exact same spot, that's okay. You're just noticing it today. Noticing the experience, the practice. Noticing any feelings that might arise while moving while we're breathing. Also noticing anything that might feel stuck now by the time we're doing the practice, noticing all things that are unstuck. Is the energy moved? So we're hoping for. When you're ready to release the right foot down to the ground, strap the left foot to the sky, circle out the ankle. And then once we're ready to do so, you're casting your bowls in the lineup and you're ready to come into a table position. It's all fours. So come in all fours, hands and knees. Taking a moment here. So apparently sound is changing, but it's not ever, it's just like. <laughs> Technology is my friend. Inhale as we arch. Belly drops down to the heart, comes forward, tail lifts, and then press on the hands and exhale to the ground. Just like for a few rounds here, inhale, arch, and then look up. Start to find some space across the belly. And exhale, press your belly around. This time, as you inhale, arch, and look up. Notice the muscles in the low back as they start to contract. That little, those are the muscles of the anterior toe. This is what I sometimes call J Lo chest. And then pressing in the other direction as you exhale and round. Now that the uh, muscles on the front of the body make abdominals. Let's do two more rounds. Inhale, arch, anterior tilt. And exhale, round, posterior tilt. One more, inhale, arch. And exhale, round. Inhale as we come back to table here, take a pause, arch and look forward. And then as you exhale, sink the hips to the heels for child pose. Take a few breaths here. On the next inhale, walk the fingertips to the left. Walk the right hand away a little bit. Get long through the right side body. Breathe into the right side of the rib cage and take a few breaths here. Inhale as the hands walk back through center and over to the left. So same thing here. Left fingertips crawl away. Breathe at least the left side of the body. Inhale as we find our way back through center. Take a moment here. And then inhale as we come forward to all fours. Curl the toes under and press up and back to down dog. Just take a moment here, pedal out and down dog. Bending one knee and then the other. Shifting a little from one side and then the other. On the next inhale, roll forward to plank pose and pause. Bring the knees down, hips to heels, child's pose. Take another round of breath here. Then move through that flow a few times. We crawl the fingertips away. Press into the hands until they activate. 
forearms lift off the ground, and then inhales, you come forward to all fours. Exhale, up the back, down, down. Inhale, roll for plank pose. Exhale, knees down, child's pose. Inhale, <laughs> arch, and exhale, down, down. I want to talk to me again. Inhale, roll forward to plank pose. Exhale, knees down, child's pose. One more. Inhale, all fours. Exhale, down, down. Inhale, roll forward, plank. Exhale, knees down, child's pose. Take a few breaths here in child's pose. Settling into your body, noticing where the energy is flowing, noticing any sensation or experience you might have. On the next inhale, you sign your way forward to all fours. Keep coming all the way down onto the belly. So if there's a reason that you can't lay on the belly, you can be here on all fours. I'm going to do some shoulder blade work here. So fingertips come out to the side. We'll let the head lift up just so it stays in line with the spine. And then shoulders come out by the ears. And then squeeze the shoulder blades together. Think upper shoulder, upper back. So right now, open the shoulders up. Upper back, press into the fingertips, keep squeezing, squeezing, press down into the tops of the feet, pull the belly in, and release. Not really a cobra here, just kind of starting to find some um, upper back or shoulder blade retraction engagement. Fingertips come down again. This time, instead of coming all the way up with the shoulders, Let's just kind of come to our natural place in the shoulders and squeeze the shoulder blades toward each other. Maybe even letting them drop down just a little and squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. Head stays in line with the spine, turning on the muscles of the upper back, and the rhomboids going, bringing them to the party. And then release. We'll take one more breath here. And then all this one on all fours, and things that thing. When you're ready, fingertips are tensed out to the side, head stays in line with the spine. Shoulder blades squeeze together. The shoulder blades turned on. Keep the spine long here. Keep the crown of the head reaching away. And release. Adding in a little movement here. So if you're on your um, belly, you can let the hips wiggle out from side to side. If you're on all fours, you just shift a little from side to side. And then once you're ready to do so, we'll all meet in down dogs, finding whatever it takes you to get there. It's totally fine. So shifting a little to the right. Pulls the left. Come back to center here, look to the hands, then walk the feet to the front of the mat. Let the knees soften, let the ribcage fall towards the thigh, let the head release down towards the earth. Maybe you grab elbow to elbow, let the hands release down towards the ground. On the next inhale, can you bring your hands to your shins? And can you bend the knees and lift the tail a little bit? So find that anterior tilt, like we just did in cow pose, that jailer pose. Lift through the chest. And then as we're lifting through the chest, lifting the chip, the tail, why not squeeze the shoulder blades together just a bit? Maybe the hands come up to the thighs. Knees come forward a little bit more, belly drives in and fold forward. Let's do two more just like that. So cue you through it again, start with the hands on the shins, 
Bend the knees, lift the tail. So as the tail lifts, you get a little arch, pull the back, the back muscles turn on. Start to lift the chest just a little bit. Find a little bit more back bend. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, hands can come up to the back. Chest lifts a little bit more, knees comes forward. So this is a little bit of a back bend here. And then fold. One more. Hands come to the shins. Lift the tail. Lift the chest. Hands come to the thighs. Shoulder blades squeeze together. Knees comes forward. Take a full breath in here, belly squeezes in. And exhale as you fold. Raise the hands down to the ground. Inhale, lengthen to a flat back. So maybe find that exact same engagement that felt good to you. And then fold. Press down to the heels and inhale, rise all the way to stand. Sweep the arms to the sky. Bring the hands to the heart. So just take a moment here and notice how you stand when you stand. We have a tendency, even in yoga, to find to fall into our old patterns. So can you notice if you, your legs, your knees locked and you're rolling to the outer edges of your feet? Do you stand way forward in your toes? Can you find the middle? Can you find the place where the thigh bones, the pelvis, kind of drops the weight into the heel of your feet? but not so much that you're falling backwards. Just enough that you're like, oh, hey, that's turned on, cool. And press down to so your toe. Keep the weight uh, dropping into the heels and inhale, sweep the arms to the side. Exhale as you fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step the left foot back. Left knee comes down here. Press straight down to the front heel and then drag the back foot in isometrically, back and in isometrically towards the front heel until you feel the inner leg line in the front of the back thigh and the underside of the front engage. Once you're there, once that foundation has been built, then reach the arms to the side. The full breath in here. And the breath out. Fold forward, plant the hands. Set it back to plank. Knees down, child toes. Inhale, all fours. And exhale, down dog. Reach the left leg back behind you. Step the left foot forward. Left heel presses straight down, right knee comes down. Let's move on to that thigh. So as we press straight down to the underside of that Left buttocks, the gluteal muscles turn on. And then take the back leg and the front foot, hug them towards each other. So now the front of the back leg, the inner back leg, the inner front leg, and the underside of the front leg shall be turned on. Find that engagement, press down, root into the earth, and reach the arms to the small final screen. Let's take a moment taller. And exhale, hands me down. This time, as we look forward, lift the back knee and step it forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Down to the feet. Inhale, rise to the sky. Reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, the right foot's going to step forward uh, back this time. Left foot stays where it is. Right knee comes down. Right hand comes off the side of the mat, and the left arm reaches forward, and then we start to spin open, belly towards the inner thigh. A little longer through the left side, the top side, press into the earth with that bottom hand, and come back to center. Left hand down, step back quick. Knees down, child toes. Inhale, all fours. And the exhale, up and back, down, down. We pedal it out. Shift over from side to side. Inhale, reach the right leg back. 
Exhale, slip the right foot forward. Left knee comes down. So left hand comes up the side of the mat here. Right arm comes forward first. Imagine someone's grabbing your wrist and pulling you forward. So you get long. And then you can start to spin the belly towards the inner uh, front thigh, belly button. Now, sometimes we want to collapse down into the shoulder. Can you press away? Can you find the strength in that underside arm? Inhale, exhale, plant the hands down. Both hands come down, look forward, lift the back knee, and step it forward. Let's take a moment here over the feet, um, about mat with distance. So, wider stance here, let the knees bend, and breathe. Letting go of any tension or holding you might be having in the neck. On the next inhale, lengthen out to a flat back. This time, bend the knees a little bit more, lift the tail a little bit more, come back to that place, and so the thigh bone, squeeze the shoulder blades together, look forward, and take a fold. Left hands to the back. Plank, knees down, child's pose. Inhale, all fours. And exhale, down dog. Reach the right leg back here, and bend the knee right So sometimes I have a tendency when we get here to just let this knee drop in, let the foot kind of hang. Can you press the outer knee towards the set? Can you crunch out that foot, that pink side edge of the foot again, like we did before? And reach away with the heel. It's really activating here. The gluteals should be turned on that right leg, outer hip. Inhale as we straighten and square. Exhale, hug the knee in and set the right foot to the right hand. Press down into the front heel. Take your time and come stand here in high lunge. So press down, front uh, gluteal turns on because you're pressing down. Arms reach to the sky. Take a big breath in here. As you exhale, bend the um, elbows, we call these knees. Squeeze the shoulder blades back and lift the chest. Can you firm up the back leg by kicking away the back heel just a little bit more? Inhale, reach the arms to the sky. We're going to pitch forward here. So now we're going to diagonal, and diagonal forward. And shift the weight forward into that front standing leg. And then hug the left foot forward. This is like a flamingo pose. It's like a flamingo standing. Can you, while you're here, notice where you hang out? In standing balance, you tend to hang out in the front of the foot. Can you shift the weight back into the heel? It doesn't matter if you're using, I have a wall next to me, just because there I use it. So you use a wall or a piece of furniture if that helps. But shift the way back into the heel of that standing foot until you can feel the right gluteal, the right buttocks turn on. Take one more breath. Here you sit down, left foot down. Reach the arms to the sky as you inhale. Exhale as we fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Hands to the ground, set the plank. Child's pose. Inhale, fours. And exhale, down down. So imagine your left leg comes back, bend the right leg open. Knee presses out, foot karate chops, heel kicks back. Turn on the outer hip and the gluteals on the side. So outside of the hip is turned on and the other side of the butt is turned on. Take two more breaths here. Inhale as you straighten and square. Exhale, hug the knee and set the left foot through. Press down into that left heel, rise up here, high lunge. So whatever it takes to get up the spine, Sometimes we have to make some readjustments, that's fine. 
Press straight down here until the underside of the buttocks turns on again. And then reach the arms to the sky. As you reach the arms to the sky, can you firm up the back leg? Can you reach away with the heel? Turn on the thigh bone so the leg is nice and straight. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, heel go again. Pull the arms, shoulders, uh, elbows once again, elbows down. Squeeze the shoulder blades towards the toe, lift the chest. Take a full breath in here. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky. So they might come back behind you a little, that's okay. And then come back up and through, pitch forward. Shift the weight into the front heel and slide up and through. Right foot comes, right knee comes up. It's finding a little flamingo on the right side, uh, left side. So again, are you gripping in your toes so your calf is doing the work? Or can you slide away back into the heel just a little bit until the left gluteal turns on, the left side of the buttocks? Take one more breath up here. Release the right foot down, come to about hip width distance. Maybe you walk it out just a little. Sometimes if we spend, well all the time, we spend a lot of time with balance on our toes, our calves go down. And obviously our glutes are stronger than our calves. So if we can keep the balance in the glutes instead of the calves, you know, burn out quite as quickly. So as you bring the feet to about hip width distance, or press straight down into the heels, and then isometrically pull the back of the heels apart. So the back of the legs pull apart. The sits bones move away from each other. At the same time, press down through the big toe mound and see if you can hug the front of the shins together. So the front of the shins hug together, the back of the legs move apart. Start to bend the knees a little bit more. Find a little anterior tilt here so we can find our J-Lo, little J-Lo booty. Belly squeezes in. Heels pulling apart. So that's actually internal rotation. The back of the legs pull apart, the front of the legs come forward. It's as if you're rotating your legs, but we're not actually moving. The feet are fixed. Arms reach to the sky here. Let's do the same thing we just did in high lunge. Reach the hands to the sky, bend the elbows. You got it right that time. Squeeze the shoulders, shoulder blades towards each other. Elbows might move back in space. Reach through the crown of the head. Sometimes we hang out here. See if you can press the center of the head back the knees comes up. Inhale, reach to the sky. And exhale as we fold forward. Nice job. We're walking it out a little, shifting from side to side here. Inhale as you lengthen out flat back. Keep the right foot where it is. We're going to set the left foot straight back from its position and then drop the heel. So coming into warrior two position, press straight down to the front heel and then rise up to what it is essentially warrior two. All right, so front heel is pressing down, knee is pressing out towards the pinky toe. Back leg is hugging in, arms are reaching out, knees comes up over the front hand. Can you feel the underside of your legs turn on? Can you feel the inner um, leg line on both legs? Can you feel the underside of the glutes on the front leg? That's what we're looking for, a little engagement through the thighs, through the thigh bones. We'll flip the front palm and reverse the warrior, get long to the right side body. You have a tendency to want to slide back here. Keep pressing into that front heel. Keep it turned on. Right forearm comes to the right thigh. Take a pause. Let the top shoulder roll in a little bit. Maybe let go of the squeezing a little bit. And then come back to that place where you can squeeze. So press down through the front heel. Drag in through back leg. This time we're going to swing the tail out behind us. So the chest is going to come diagonally forward a little. 
And then see if you can turn on this position and your tilt. So see if you can turn on the lower back muscles. From this place, can you press down into the front heel again and roll back toward uh, to fat angle with the low back muscles turned on? If you can't, it's okay. It's something you kind of play around with. Top arm reaches up and over. And then slowly cartwheel the hands down. Setbacks down, right up here. Pedal down. Inhale, roll forward, plank. Knees down, child's pose. Inhale, all fours. And exhale, down dog. Look to the hands here. Then we'll step, hop, or walk. Just feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, hold. Inhale, lengthen, bend the knees. Step the left, uh, right foot straight back, left foot same where it is. Pin the heel over, so in warrior two position. Press down to the front heel and rise up. Stay where you are, I'm gonna move to the camera so you can see me. So let yourself get here, then work on the engagement. So I have a tendency to drop in through my back leg, you can see it on the side. Press down to the front heel, and then isometrically pull the feet towards each other. This leg starts to lift a little bit more. Reach the arms out, belly goes in, gaze over the front hand. Flip the front palm, reverse the warrior. And then back up and through left forearm to left thigh. It's the same thing, kind of let go of the engagement. Give all those muscles that have been turned on for a little while a break, and then come back. Press down to the front heel, drag the back foot in, send the butt back, a little J-Lo action. Keeping the J-Lo action, keeping the low back turned on, can you press back into side angle? Can you press a little more firm to the front leg? Bring the front heel, bring the top arm up and over and diagonal. One more breath. Cartwheel the hands down. Step back plank, knees down, child's pose. Let's take a few breaths here. If it's hard for you to notice what's going on in the hips and child's pose, then maybe come out of the pose just a little bit. Maybe come to all fours. But I invite you to just bring your awareness back to the region of the pelvis. And as you're here, noticing if things feel different. Do they feel the same? Do things maybe feel less stuck, more stuck? A lot of sensation, no sensation at all. Maybe you're noticing a subtle flow of energy, some prana, some life force. Let's take two more breaths here. When you're ready to do so, stretch the hands up in order to there, find your way to all fours, and then up and back to down dog. Reach the right leg back behind here. Draw the knee in, set the right foot to the uh, right thumb. Then look forward. We're gonna actually step all the way forward here. <laughs> Inhale, lengthen out. Shift the weight here into the heels. Again, no tendency to pop into the toes. Shift the weight into the heels, then the knees. And so we'll work on joy up to a chair position. So as you're in chair, once again, press down to the heel. Pull the heels isometrically apart. Front of the shins come in. 
J Lo from the low back, the we'll end your tip. We're going to add some balance here. So if you need wall assistance, by all means, wall. We'll draw the right knee in and up, cross the right hand, uh, right ankle, and both left knee. Body parts are escaping me today. Sorry about that. Karate chop through the pinky side edge of the foot. Press down into that right knee. And can you hear? Sometimes we start to get a little lazy and we round. Can you find a little bit more anterior tilt? Can you anterior tilt a little bit more on the right side with the right buttocks up just a bit? Imagine that you're trying to spread your sit bones apart by moving the right hip away from the left, but the right foot stays where it is. Back to center. Release the right foot down. From here, step the left foot back, coming into a high lunge position. So hands and hands with the hips. Just take a pause here, look forward. Move the weight into that front heel, shift forward. And can you start to shift forward without shifting to the toes? Can you stay in the heel, stay in the heel, stay in the heel, and lift the left leg back behind? So when we tend to lose it and feel like we need something on the ground is when we're in our toes. Can you stay back in your heels? And can you kick the left heel towards the side a little bit more? And then release the toes down. Now shorten the stance. Take a fold over that front leg for a pyramid. So right leg stays straight. Maybe using blocks or um, whatever you have around. Somebody told me the other day they were using a tube of Clorox wipes. <laughs> Whatever works. We'll look forward here and shift the weight, stepping forward. Maybe wiggling out the hips a little from side to side. We're down to the feet, weight shifts into the heels. We find our boots, we the chair pose. Shift the weight over to that right leg, press the left ankle. So you might stay here. See if you can keep the weight shifting back. And then can you take the left sit so and lift it up? And flaring out to the side, a little anterior tilt on one side. Release that left foot down. Set the right foot back. So first finding a high lunge. And then starting to shift forward here. So can you shift forward slowly so the weight stays in that front heel? You can keep the weight in the front heel and then eventually lift the right toes off the ground. And then once you're there, maybe you lift the right heel a little bit higher. Keep the weight in that left heel. And then set the right foot back about halfway, or I don't know, two thirds of the way to your high lunge. Straightening out that front leg, you're finding a pyramid pose. From here, place the hip, bend the front knee, step back, down dog. Reach the right leg back, step the right foot outside that right thumb. Put the left knee from down here. So maybe you use your canister with box wipes, a little step stool or some blocks. Maybe let the forearm come down, forearms come down. Uh, maybe it's a those props. Make it straight to the earth, maybe that's where you're at. The front knee can kind of flail out to the right a little bit.
And then after this lizard, I'm going to do a funky lizard. So we're going to curl the back toes under, lift the knee, pop the knee forward so that you're more at a right angle, hip over the back knee, and then the knee comes straight out, heel over the front. And then we'll take that back foot and we'll take it around. So now we're on the knee, the heels behind us. Lift the right sits bone of your front leg, keep the booty to the side as you fold inside that front leg. Bringing the hands back to center when you're ready to do so. We'll dig through the chest. And step back, hands down, up. Left leg reaches back behind. And step the left foot to the outside of that left hand. Knee comes down. You can always pad the back knee. Um, it just depends on what surface is underneath you. Again, you'll be coming to blocks. Let the knees swing out to the front, knees swing out to the side, just slowly making the toes turn out. Bring the hands back underneath you. Toes up um, underneath, knee pops forward. Again, turning that foot. It's um, really a rotation of the thigh bone, foot swings around behind you. And then taking the muscles from the to the sky. And take a fold inside of that front leg, diagonally away from the pelvis. You might play around with your positioning and notice a different sensation in that front outer hip. That's cool. You can certainly do that. Slowly coming back to center. We step it back. This time reaching the right leg back, bringing the shin across for pigeon pose. So before we just collapse into pigeon, which is I know where we all want to be, <laughs> karate chop into that pinky side into the foot again to let ankle bone loose up just a little. Maybe the, um, you can put the weight in that front foot and the knee can slide back a little. Back foot. Um, Wiggles back, and then as you chop down, as you can set it to the foot, press down into that front knee. And see if you can find without your hands a little bit of a lift. Drag that back knee in isometrically towards the front knee. Lift through the chest, maybe even from here and back to this place. A little back bend action here. If you'd like to, this in your practice. I didn't do any of the things to like. Grab the back foot and all that stuff, but that's kind of your jam, and that's what you've been doing. That's cool. And then once you're ready, you can let go of some of the engagements. And keep pressing down a little to that front foot. Take a full forward.
Let's take one more breath here. When you're ready to do so, coming back to down dog, you pedal it out. And then bring that left foot forward when you're ready. Again, karate chopping into the pinky side of the foot. Pressing down into the knee, back foot wiggles back. So once you press down into that front knee, then you can isometrically drag in the back leg. And then the strength of the leg starts to hold you. So again, you can find that shoulder blades in the terror, chest lifts. Again, if you're grabbing the back foot, so you just want to grab on, you can. But once you're ready to, you can take fold forward, or whatever variation works for you here. Take a few more breaths here. Shifting over onto that right front hip, rolling over and around. If you have um, something that you need to strap, you can grab onto it. We want our backs. Let the left foot to the mat. And we're going to draw the right knee to the sky. If you don't have a strap, you can just bring your hands around the back of the leg. Or maybe you can reach the foot. But if you do have a strap, or hands out or something, you can place it around the arch, high in the arch of your foot. You're going to reach the foot, uh, the heel towards the sky. So you're going to walk your hands up as far as you can, whatever you're holding on to. And then the shoulders kind of release down to the earth. That gives you a little bit of grab on the other side. You might stay here. Just notice any sensation that you're experiencing in the back of the leg. Maybe you can extend the left leg along the mat. And if it works for you, you have the ability to do so with what you're using as a strap. You want to bring um, the right foot towards the midline of the body or across the midline of the body, targeting the outer line of the leg. This will tell you the line of your body, the line, if you have a line on the outer body that's tight, this will tell you where it is, this is where the sensation will show up. And back up through center, and bend the knee, remove the strap. Look over to side number two. The strap will around high on the foot, and jump as hard as fire as far as you can, with the shoulders really to the ground. So if you're using kind of like a stretchy band, just be aware of that. You don't want to let the little bit kind of come around the other side and smack in the face. That would be terrible. Maybe extend the right leg. Along the mat, if that works for you. I'm going to shift uh, the two ends of the strap or whatever you're using into your right hand. The ability to do so and let that left foot come across the midline over towards the right um, hip. For me, it's like just past the right shoulder. So my pelvis is still down. I want to target, targeting the outer line of the leg into the outer hip. Probably what you're going to hit here, though, is somewhere outer hamstring, IT band, outer calf, maybe, ankle, maybe. Make a 
and at the center, then the knee removes the strap. And opening the feet to just wider than the headboard to sit, so not right at six bones, but so the feet, if you were to reach down, the feet would be just outside of the gluteals on either side. We're going to let both knees drop towards the left. So you want the feet be away from me a little, let both knees drop towards the left. And if this is the right amount of sensation for you, then stay right here. If you would like to try, a little variation on this, a little bit more sensation you can cross the left ankle over the right outer um, thigh, I guess. We'll create a little bit more pull through the right side of the abdomen, right outer hip. That's a great yoga training once and um, with Josh Summers. Like, um, years ago, we called this crooked cucumber. I'm not really sure why, but it's an interesting name. It's, it obviously stuck with me, so we'll slowly come back up to center and cross, clear cross. Again, the feet are just wider than a little distance. Maybe let the knees windshield washer from side to side. And then once you're ready to do so, letting both knees drop towards the right. And again, if you're looking for more sensation, left upper hip, the right leg can cross over. You know, our time of quarantine, we've been sitting more, all of us. Regardless of how much activity you get, because we don't have the ability to be out and about doing things, we spend more of our time sitting. And so the side waist, the abdomen, the hip, the um, psoas, the whole get jammed up a little bit crankier. This is a nice pose for that. We we'll come back to center when you're ready. And then if there are any final poses that you'd like to add in here. You really want to do a happy baby, you really want to do an inversion, you want to add in a bridge, um, something else altogether. I invite you to do so. But if you are ready, you can find your way into your shavasana. As you're finding your way into your shavasana, just becoming aware again of the body's connection to the earth. When we started our practice, I asked you to pay close attention to the connection to the back of the earth, uh, the back of the pelvis to the earth. And so tune back into that now and notice. If you feel any differences. No, I'm going to be heavy. Coming go of any holding, restriction, or everything that we may be experiencing right now.
Begin to draw some awareness back to your breath. Deepening the inhalation and the exhalation. Find some awareness back to the body. Wiggling the fingers and toes. Rolling the wrists and ankles. Allowing those small movements to graduate into larger movements. Maybe taking a full body stretch if that serves you. Eventually finding your way to a seated position and bringing the hands to the heart. May you find the balance in your day between effort and ease. May your emotions be one. Positivity, love, and joy. May you be safe and healthy. Not safe.